the transportation sector is currently the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in California, and EVs will be critical to meeting our zero emission goals. The prior select committee hearing focused on where chargers are being built and who's left out, how the state is responding and understanding that to have an equitable EV transition means more than chargers, but investing in electrified public transit infrastructure and more. However, as passenger vehicles account for around one quarter of California's GHGs, barriers to rapid EV adoption need to be addressed. Next to cost, which is decreasing, availability and reliability of charging networks are the biggest concerns folks have when considering switching to an EV. And recent experiences of EV owners demonstrate a troubling trend in charger reliability shortfalls. Um, and I'd also note, you know, we, we've seen the EV vehicles are, um, the selling of EV vehicles or EV vehicle sell, sales have been down and we know that one of the big concerns leading to that is people's concerns about um, range anxiety. We all know about range anxiety up here. Um, <clears throat> my colleagues on the select committee no doubt have a story or two to share about their own charging experiences, as do I. And our focus will be to delve into the many aspects of EV charging, difficulties consumers are facing, what government and industry are doing in response, and how the legislature can engage to help create greater certainty for consumers. One of the things that I always think about, I hadn't really thought about this until I, I talked with one of the um, rental car companies, is that you know rental cars are also transitioning to electric, and I think about you know my mom or my dad running an electric car and they don't have one or you know whoever, and there's such a learning curve when you get an electric car, and you have to get a million apps for every little charger that you're going to use. And, you know, I just, it's hard for me to imagine how this is going to work for people and it not be a total nightmare for their experience. And so I think that, you know, not only for that scenario, but just for all of our sanities, these, these agreements are so, so important. And, you know, is there, I, I, I've been hearing about some silver linings, which is exciting to hear, um, is there a light at the end of the tunnel on this around, are we ever gonna be able to get to one app where we can see everything and we can pay and we can pull up and just charge as easily as you know an integrated system um, we know happens at, at Tesla? Is that in our future, do you think? One last question for Ms. Terry, and really appreciate the work that you've done um, around that EV technician um, Certificate. I don't know if it's a certification or uh, standards, but you know, and just creating um, standards and and a workforce that's much needed in this space. Um, so I was wondering, you know, what your thoughts are about what the state could be doing to make sure that both regulators and workforce is ready for the task. If we're supposed to be getting to a million chargers, which I think, you know, we'll see. Uh, by 2030, then, you know, clearly we need a whole lot more support on the maintenance side um, to be a part of that. Well, for, of course, I could, you know, take all the compliments, but I do want to acknowledge there was a colleague of manufacturers like Flow, ABB, Electrified America, Tesla, that actually worked on this um, Essentially, we call it a body of knowledge um, that was put together with SAE and those manufacturers. And they worked on it for eight months, meeting every two weeks. And these were engineers from these major manufacturers collaborating on what an actual EVSC technician needed to learn. So just really want to acknowledge that partnership. And it was amazing to see for someone that's been in the industry for a while to see that collaboration. Um, I think what the state can do around this really is one, SAE will be the, is working to be in the certifying body arm. So we came up with this body of knowledge. It's available online. So, you know, um, workforce development programs, uh, colleges, literally anyone now has access to what allows a person to be a great technician that is available for free online through SAE. And SAE will start administrating the test, I believe, in Q2 of, of this year. 
And I think that it would be great if the California government could assess the EDSE technician certification from SAE as a best practice, right? Because as we, we worked with the industry to come up with this and folks will be taking this test, if there could be an acknowledgement from the state that this is an agreed upon best practice, I think that would be awesome. Um, and in regards to O and M, you know, we continue would love to continue to be hopeful with getting data from the field and being able to bubble that up when necessary. And um, and thank you again.